but according to what everyone can bring into that. And that's still my approach to, like, every other thing that we ever do, you know? Yeah. Putting on a completely unrelated event, just use all of those skills that you learned long ago from all of these things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so everybody who's ever taught me improv, everybody who's uh, played with me on stage, everybody who's not showed up to the troupe rehearsal has put some knowledge in the bank of how you keep trying to walk with integrity with other human beings, what kind of setbacks there are for that, and what wonderful things we can achieve together if we just keep trying. And that's really a practice, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, And really more than a practice, uh, that's something that I talk a lot about in my Thinking Deeply episodes with Dudes and Beer. Um, is the concept of synergy, the concept of, and, and I learned it at number one, um, growing up in a church and growing up working mm-hmm. in a church um, and understanding that larger concept of helping each other out and trying to get something done as a community um, for the betterment of the community. Uh, yeah. But Aside from that, um, it did directly come from my theater experience, my technical theater experience, and uh, my experience of um, being a musician and playing with people. Mm. Um, and there's there's a far cry difference, and I I equate it to theater and improv, um, as far as being in a band or being in a jam band. Um, being in a band definitely takes discipline and you have to learn your lines and you have to learn these things. Um, just like in theater, like, Hey, we have our hard lines. We have our hard points. Um, you know, if you have to fake it to make it on stage, do it. But really we're supposed to be sticking to the script here. Um, and that's what being a traditional band is about. You know, if you're going to go out and be a Beatles cover band, um, you're going to have very, very little room for improv on your stage. If you're going to be a traditional mm-hmm. musician, you have very, very little room for improv on your stage because improv doesn't translate to the normal human mind. Um, you know, it's 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 interesting in that way. And I've, I've tried to explain it to Amy um, why a lot of people don't necessarily understand improv. Um, they don't necessarily get what they're seeing on stage, you know. Um, and to me, it's, it's very much why a lot of people don't get the Grateful Dead, um, or, Mm -hmm. or get fish. Um, you know, they may have heard a song on the radio and they like the album version, but why the heck is that three and a half minute long song, 15 (laughs) minutes on stage? What's that all about? Um, and I know audio engineers that, that they're like, I love mixing jam bands for about the first 20 minutes. Um, and, (laughs) and then after that, I can't stand it anymore. And for me, um, that's what I loved mixing, and that's what I loved playing. Um, Something where, sure, we had somewhat of a structure. We had an idea of where we wanted to go. Like, these are the songs, but what's going to happen in between those songs? We have no idea. You know, we're going to hit these points on stage, but the rest of it is going to be something totally different. And every single time we hop up on stage, it's going to be different. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. kind of like kind of like when the kids in the hall go out on the road. Um, there's there's a script, but a lot of that is improv on stage as well. You know, they've yeah. they've roughed things out so that they have a plot line to hit. But what happens in between those notes is up in the air. You know, and it, it really is um, that concept of synergy. And being able to, and it weirds a lot of people out. It really does. It it really creeps them out to like feel the vibration of somebody else across stage and be tuned Mm -hmm. and be tuned into that. Um, Mm. And I've, I've had it a lot with my music because a lot of my music is created in the realm of improv. Um, uh, I have a rough map of what I want to do and everything else is up in the air. And that freaks a lot of people out. And whenever they've stepped in the studio, they kind of like, whoa, whoa what was that? Like, that that was really kind of a weird ride for me. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, for you to say that um, improv directly relates to what you do in a church and how you live your life 
and everything else, it is it is very much um, a way of living life and a way of thinking about the world um, to do that. Mm. Yeah, and it it's very much that what you're talking about there that it it can be unsettling for some people because it has that sort of uh, that feeling of energy and electricity that goes with it, and yeah. because that it is death defying it is the high flying trapeze act there's no real uh underlying structure yeah to, you could fall at any moment if, if you fall <laughs> to me it, that makes it analogous sort of to mysticism if you have mm-hmm. uh orthodoxy over here and then you have the concept of mysticism hmm. where you're having sort of a direct experience with yeah. the divine that's a little messy and I think that those things don't need to be at odds, but they do sort of inherently appeal to different kinds of people. Yeah. And whether it's music or uh, theater, there, or there's always going to be a, a subset of people for whom that's the most exciting stuff, you know, where they, where they, they love what's out beyond the boundary of uh, what they've already done with the safety net, and they want to be high flyers. You know, and so I think that that's mm-hmm. one of the parts of it that's nice. And then when you cross apply it to the realms where you don't want to freak people out, you don't want to make mm-hmm. people start questioning things too much. You just want to help them. I think what you're really bringing back is the idea of bravery, the idea that it's going to be all right if we do something a little different, if we try it or brainstorm it or mm-hmm. collaborate with it instead of just trying to find the correct answer first. You're just bringing that confidence in, and well, that's one of the ways that, I, you know, being versed in improv makes you a very nice uh, guide for other people in other endeavors. Yeah, and I, I've actually found that most of the time the people that have had that experience end up becoming the safety net. Um, yeah. Beca- because they can think on their, if somebody forgets their lines on stage, they can think on their feet. Um, if somebody, mm-hmm. if even in a band, if somebody goes off, they can make that off thing seem right. Um, you know, and it's, it, it really does, like you said, give you, give you the confidence to kind of be willing to go beyond, um, and, and be willing to kind of step, dip your toe into the unknown and see what it feels like for a second. You know, recently mm-hmm. I, I teach, um, mo- primarily I teach level one and I have one more level one that I'm just finishing up actually this week before I uh, focus on baby. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I, I was talking to them about this idea that um, improv, a lot of times when the audience has to deal with it, uh, it's their their experience of it is much different than the than the performers that I said you know when you're performing improv you're feeling the magic you're creating in it you have this joy and this excitement and you can you know that anything could happen and it's wild Mm -hmm. but like we talk about the high-flying trapeze act in that the audience is fully aware of the danger. Whereas when you watch improv, I don't know that the audience is always fully aware of the danger. So I, I, I'm always trying to figure out how best to help the students communicate to the audience just how, um, wild it is for them because the like the excitement and the joy that they are feeling is not always easily translatable uh to the audience and i and i worry sometimes you know like the audience just watches it and they're like yeah that was a good sketch show and you're like no 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 (laughs) they made it all up and even that they're just like i still don't totally understand what that means and i i I'm still working on it. I I think well, that's a sort of a larger lesson, but like to try to get the and, audience to feel the uh, excitement the well, way it feels for the performers. And that's it that that's what I've tried to explain before I think is the misconception that people have with improv. Um unfortunately, socially they have been trained that improv is whose lines it whose line is it anyway. 
um, that everybody's going to take a suggestion from the audience or that somebody's going to give them a cue and a place and, you know, something silly. Um, they don't understand that, like, what they see on TV that is quote-unquote improv is technically a game that improvers use to loosen themselves up and get into that synergistic mode to where they're able to get into each other's heads and get into that space and kind of wiggle in, you know, and, and get comfy before they actually go out. Well, yeah, but there's different theories where one group, the short form, believes that is the improv in and of itself. Sure. And then long form improv uses the short form games to vibe with one another. Yeah, but the the problem is the audience isn't in on that information. Sure. See, I, I personally believe that the audience, especially the audience for an improv show, the people who have chosen to go see something that they know is not going to have props or costumes or a set or a script, that those people really want to be delighted and they really want uh, to be taken along as a participant, you know, to participate in their way Mm -hmm. in, uh, in what's happening with the improv. And I, I'm not super pro, uh, obviously, I'm sorry, my baby just cried and my brain went, forgot the words to the thing I need. I'm going to close this door. (laughs) Okay. So in terms of the idea that the audience is somehow participating, one of the traditional ways of doing that is to take a suggestion. And I don't think that suggestions are necessary for that, but I do think that it is necessary that everybody who does improv understands that that audience wants to be a part of it with you. Mm -hmm. They want to experience it with you, that that's part of what's created the hunger in them to be there. And I just think that the more honest and open and vulnerable that you can be to your audience, the more that they get on a visceral level what's going on. But even if they don't sort of pick up, oh my, look at how brave and clever those uh, intellectual giants that I've just seen are, that they were able to get up there and do that without a script. You know, even if they sort of leave the show going, well, I don't know how much of that was pre-planned or whatever. To me, that's not the point. The point is that they have a good experience and that uh, they feel engaged, like they also were a part of it. And that can happen just as much in live theater that is scripted as it can in improv. When people go to any form of live theater, even if it's scripted, they know that what they're seeing still exists in a way, just in this moment, for their eyes, for them, that it's not on television, that it won't be repeated over and over again in syndication, that it exists in that moment, and that anything, in a way, can happen in that moment, that a show is different from night to night, even if it's scripted. And I think that the only difference that we have between us and scripted theater is that we attract a different group of people and that uh, we're afraid that it's not going to be a good enough quality for those people who come. And so we want them to understand, well, I just made it up right now. (laughs) Um, And I think if we just kind of, a lot of times, jettisoned that fear that they would be kinder to us as an audience if they understood that we couldn't plan it and instead assumed that they were going to be kind to us as an audience because they just want to have fun and they just want to be a part of what's going on. I think that that would maybe change our frame a little bit away from really wanting them to understand what's going on and instead letting them be a part of what's going on. Yeah, for me, I just, I I want to let them in on the magic. It's like, it's like, I almost want every audience to be my, my level one class. Like, it's like, guys, do you know how amazing this is? This is crazy. 
You know, like literally just us standing in this room together talking. It's it's amazing. You know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>